Hello, everybody. My name is Edward S. Redcar, and I'm the host of Edward S. Redcar's Entertainer Chat. And today I have the extremely, the extreme awesome pleasure <laughs> and honor and privilege of interviewing Natalie Rowe, zooming all the way from Australia. Uh, the far, you, you win the prize, Natalie, for the farthest interview, like in, in uh, American Miles and something like... Uh, like over 10, almost 10,000 miles. It's like some crazy number. It's like 10,000 miles wow. or whatever it is. So, so you get, uh, uh, get uh, first prize for that. So, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So before, uh, before we start the interview, let me tell everybody a little bit uh, about you before we get into everything, everything, Natalie, uh, not everything uh, in the time <laughs> that we have here, but we'll try to touch on, on most of it. So, so everybody, uh, Natalie, uh, she is an artist who is in, uh, I had to write all this down because it's, I mean, <laughs> you do so many things that I, I, I forget. I just got to write everything down. So uh, uh, she's an artist who is an actress, a model, uh, a recent fight choreographer and a uh, uh, first time fight choreographer on a, a, a project. Uh, mm -hmm. She's a, a fitness enthusiast. She makes organic homemade products. I'm not done yet. Uh, she's an author. <laughs> she's an author, a former wrestler known as Queen Bianca. Yeah. And uh, she has the four-legged love of her life, who is who just turned 14, uh, Gabriel. So um, with all that said, Natalie, and now that everybody knows a little bit about you, uh, Welcome to the show, and uh, and uh, how are you today? Good. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm really <laughs> well, good. I'm, I'm really good. <laughs> I'm excited to have you too, because like I said, this is you win the first prize for the farthest <laughs> interview, like on practically on the other side of the world. If not, it's halfway across. If not, more than than halfway yeah. across. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, your signal is coming through crystal clear. Your audio is clear. Your your video is clear. Even though you're over ten thousand miles away, it's just the the magic of technology, right? Magic of technology. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, um, usually, with all my guests, that uh, when I start the show, um, I like to know a little bit about them, and I like my audience to know a little bit uh, more about them. So I always want to know how they got into uh, what they do today. Uh, and in your case, it's so many, so many different talented things. The, the list goes on and on, uh, whether they're an actor, a musician, producer, director, writer, screenwriter, whatever. So, um, so I'll pose this uh, first uh, uh, question to you that uh, uh, you had, as I mentioned in your introduction, you had a professional wrestling career uh for about five years and as i mentioned you were known as uh, queen uh, bianca and uh how i think everybody would like to know as well as i do how did you become involved in wrestling and decide to uh, uh pursue it as a as a professional career uh well when i was younger i used to watch wwf it was called back then and i saw the rock on the show and as soon as I saw him he had so much charisma so much drive so much like the crowd just drew to him and uh, I was like I want to do that I want to be like him and then he like did like he popped the eyebrow and I was like oh my god I can do that oh my god and <laughs> from then on <laughs> from then on I was just like every time he came on I was just like that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. Uh -huh. And um, I remember this one moment where he was just standing in the crowd, like standing in the ring. The crowd was just like going at him, going at him. And he just stood there. And then he, all of a sudden he just pops the um, eyebrow and the crowd went mental. And I was <laughs> like, that's what I want to do. I want to have that much like, um, like, all control the, i guess it is i guess yeah um, like like magnetism charisma, or charisma yeah. Or, yeah whatever yeah 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 and so that started me off on wanting to do wrestling okay so, okay yeah, so it's because of the rock really <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. with that so with that popping eyebrow uh did you ever think to yourself well 
I've got to get a technique like that. Uh, even, even if it's like raising my other eyebrow, maybe not the same eyebrow, but you know, some, some kind of, some kind of catch that, uh, get the, uh, get the fans to, uh, to, uh, knowing you better. I, I did work out something while I was work, uh, while I was wrestling. It was, I still, because that's why I call myself Queen Bianca, because a queen demands, like, respect. She demands, um, like, attention. She demands, like, you know, everyone to listen, to bow. And, well, that's what I thought at the time because I, right. I was a heel, so I was a mean girl. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, you all have to bow to me kind of thing. Right, um, right. So every time I would come out of, come out to to my song um I would just stand there and just stare everyone down mm -hmm. so that was because I was I didn't want to you know I didn't want to copy the rock and be like you know put the eyebrow up but yeah. um so I stood there and I would just stare everyone down like you to like as in like a whole you you listen to me I'm a superior to you right right you right listens to me and you're nothing you're below me right. you're beneath me kind of thing there you um go. if so, like if you're just talking about it in just normal ways, it sounds really bad, but luckily it's wrestling, so I can get away with it. That's right. <laughs> but I, whenever I did get like people, you know, yelling at me and stuff as they do because I was a bad girl, um, I would pop the eyebrow up and be like, excuse me, you do not speak to me like that. Right. I'm your queen. You bow down to me. And they'd right. just be like going off at me. So I <laughs> found through the five years that I did in my own way um get my own kind of like charisma um work the crowd in some way that i was trying i was trying to learn off the rock in some ways mm -hmm. so that it wasn't the same but in my own personal way of how to do it so i right. feel like right so i was so I, sorry i was um the most hated woman in the company well that's one good point. that that's good because that's more publicity right yeah yeah, so it was literally like as soon as my music would hit, the crowd would just go booing me, like as oh, in like okay. Most, I think it was like over five thousand people we had in one um in one sitting or more wow. actually because there was people who couldn't sit down, so there was a lot more. But we there was no way we we're counting them. And as soon as my music hit, every single person was booing me. Oh. <laughs> and when I walked out, I saw like um, the guy at the sound booth and he was just going mental. He was just like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Like, because that's what you want as like a bad girl or bad right, person. Right, right, a heel, right. as we call yeah. them. We want them to, you want to get that response as soon as your music hits. You want that response of mm -hmm. the booing. I couldn't even do mic spots at all. Because um, nobody, was, yeah, nobody mm -hmm. could hear you, right? It's like the sound, well, uh, the crowd was so loud, right? That's a, that was it. But it was also like they couldn't hear me if they were, if I was talking. But as soon as I put the microphone towards my mouth, they'll start booing me. As soon as I pull it down, they'll go quiet. So then I'm like, okay. And as soon as I went <laughs> the microphone put up, they went booing again. And so, right, right, right. Yeah. So, so I mean, so crazy. you had that power. It's like you had the floor, right? Whenever yeah. it's like whenever Queen Bianca speaks, people listen, right? They yeah. they stop they stop in their tracks and they stop everything they're doing, right? To to focus totally on you, right? They focused a lot on me, but um, it was the responses that I got that everyone loved because even though they um they hated me, like hated the character. Uh huh. It was like a they love to they it's like a love hate relationship where they love to hate me like so they lo they want to see me to hate me if mm -hmm. that makes sense mm -hmm. well and, sure sure it does yeah, yeah it, it's really weird because when I even if I I had to be one of the last people that would come out um when we close like when all the show was over and everything I had to be one of the last people to come out because the crowd would go at me. Like as in like they'll be like, Oh Bianca, you this, you that. And right. I just be like, you know, whatever kind of thing. So I had to go out a certain way just so I can avoid the crowd. Oh, okay. Okay. You you had to have like a like a secret passageway to get out yeah. the back, right? Like a quick exit yeah. out the back there. So yeah. So so when, they so they wouldn't throw so they wouldn't throw like uh like uh like bats or footballs or something at you <laughs> on their way out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I 
it got to a point where I was going around the ring to get into the into the ring and like so I'd go around to work the crowd but it got to a point where I would just go straight into the ring and not work the crowd on either side because I didn't need to they were going completely off and booing me and yelling Oh, okay, okay. um reacting in the way that we wanted that I didn't even have to do anything I just I, my music came on I stood there they I just I didn't have to do anything so <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. So so you didn't have to go, you didn't have to go through the whole routine like a lot of times on on WWF wrestling you see somebody coming out and like uh, there's two rivals that don't even get in the ring yet and they're kind of bantering back and forth like before they get on the ring so so you didn't have to get like any folding metal chairs and hit anybody over the head right it was just just your I presence you didn't have to do any anything extra to get their attention no I um I think it was just because I stared people down before I walked out like right before, right right when I walked out and I just stood there and I just demanded um the control I demanded the um the respect and right even though right it was like even though it was the kind of opposite that they were giving me the booze it was what you wanted to mm but -hmm. I just I didn't have to do too much banter with anyone because um, as soon as they were against me, as soon as they knew that my name, as soon as the crowd knew that my name was coming up or Bianca's name was coming up, they just, they instantly loved the person, the other opposite person. Like even it got to a point where one of the girls, she was a bad girl as well. And I was a bad girl and we, we went into a match together and they were like, oh, God, it's going to be interesting who they're going to go for. They all went for her. They never went for me. I got oh. like, um, when I looked back on the uh, video, um, I got like maybe one or two people saying go, Bianca. <laughs> and everybody Otherwise, else. They were going for her. They were like <laughs> all like cheering her on and they're like, kill her, kill her. I was like, yeah. oh, that's it. Yeah, but you know, everybody... <laughs> You know, everybody was there to see you, not her. They they might have been rooting for her, but they came to see you. They they came to see her uh what beat you or slaughter you or something to yeah. you know to make like a total uh, uh to make you lose or something, but they came to, they came to see you. So you're you were the draw. You were yeah. you were the reason but, why everybody was there. So uh, and but it was funny though. I did end up um, winning that match. And, oh, did um, you really? Good for yeah. you. Good for you. <laughs> and I choked her and choked her out, like, as in one of the moves. And the crowd was just like, they just hated it. But they they actually wanted her to win. And right. as soon as, like, I jumped on her back and I did, like, um, a choker move, they were like, oh, no, she's <laughs> going to win. And then next minute she got, like, she passed out and everything. Like, you know, not, not really, but... Yeah, you know, we have to. They have to. It's. It is. You know, we have to act in some ways. As right, well. so right. 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 What you was, what you eventually got into. So that came in yeah. handy there too, to your advantage. Being all yeah, how to act. Yeah, yeah. When people say like, "Oh, wrestling is fake," and you don't have you, um, it's all pretend. I'm like, yeah, you damn straight. I had to. I had to act a lot of my time in there. Like, there's a lot of stories that I'm writing about, as you know. Um, oh, about yes. all what happened in wrestling and um, it's just like um, I had to pretend a lot of the time so my acting skills they were they were pretty good at some point <laughs> right well, well I'd have to say they're more than pretty good you know if you got that much drawn that much <laughs> attention for them to hate you so much you yeah. you, you must have acted pretty well you know you, yeah I don't know if you uh <laughs> Uh, ever ever heard of uh, the, uh, this? Well, some of it is real, right? I mean, it has to be, yeah. right? I mean, the fighting has to be uh, like, uh, what do they say? Like, sometimes it's orchestrated, sort of like choreographed, but but there, I mean, there are real moments, right? Yeah. I, yeah. Um, I, you can get injured very oh, easily. Oh, yes. Oh, sure. Um, there was like, even one time um I popped my shoulder out popped it back in and that was just through um training and the the injury that stopped me from wrestling was um I popped uh I pulled a ligament off my bone in my back oh and yeah it's it's still not 100 percent but um, yeah it got pulled off so 
every time I've been, to, you know, I moved around, I couldn't do what I wanted to do. Oh, so okay, that was okay. an injury that took me out, basically. Okay, okay. Um, but there yeah. was other injuries, like, um, that I remember in another match that it was simple enough that I was at the end, like, there was a six-man tag, and um, one of the girls who's now on um, WWE, Indy um, Hartwell, um, uh -huh. we, were on, we wrestled a few times together, and she was in the match too, and this is when she started out. And I was on the end of like the row from the boys, and there were all the good guys were like flipping over the ring ropes and stuff like that. And they were like, they put me to the end so that you know I'd be more protected, you know. And yeah. this one move, one guy he jumps over the rope and he kicks me in the head, Ooh. and I have like I had like a literally a, a um an egg shaped on my head. Oh wow! And one of the boys was. I was like, "Oh god, I got, I got kicked," and he just grabbed me and gone, "Stay down, you stay down." Oh okay. Um, yeah, and I ended up having um, a concussion. Um, and then Indy also had a nosebleed. She got a lot of nosebleeds back then. Um, she got, she, I think she cut a lip or something like that. And then we had boys falling on top of us, and we just had to keep going. So right, 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 right. Most but injuries, if you can keep going, you keep going. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. But it, but it was nice of him to to tell you to stay down because he knew you were really hurt bad. Right. So that's yeah. that. No. One thing is, is that even though um, injuries can happen, but even if just say if we don't like each other in general, like just say um, there was another guy that I didn't like, he didn't like me, we just didn't get along. Um, but if we were in a match together and I got injured, he would make sure that I'm okay, like, you know, or vice versa. Like, you know, I would go over there and go, are you okay? But do you need to, like, do we need to stop okay. or anything? Like, okay. Just go, no, it's fine, just keep going. But we do take care of each other in the ring. We don't oh. have to necessarily like each other outside of the ring. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. In the ring, it's all um, the slate's clean. We just look after each other. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And that's where people think that it's choreographed. Yes, it is. But it's so that, you know, accidents happen. But also with the women that I wrestled at the time, we used to actually do, like, we actually did hit each other because we wanted to make it look real. Well, sure, um, sure. But we we worked out, we um we were like built to um to take those yeah. like, hits. It might not be hard, yeah. but you know, yeah. it's it's something that even yeah. just a small kick with adrenaline going can oh, hurt yeah. you. Oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah, because you're hitting you're hitting with everything you've got uh in those instances. Yeah. And yeah, uh no, you were saying that you know you were well trained and everything and it, it's like uh uh, I mean, you're all like professional athletes. I mean, mm. that's a very, I mean, just like any other sport, uh, if not more, because you withstand, you know, so much uh, of a beating. You have to be yeah. uh, heavier. We had to condition our bodies. So when yeah. we first start out, um, there's like these bump drills and stuff that we do and we get like bruises on our arms and, you know, our back gets really stiff. Um, but that's just conditioning our body to be able to deal with mm -hmm. that impact. Mm -hmm. Um, cause if somebody just say, if you went in there, not knowing anything, no, no training, no nothing, you would get so injured from, right, right, like, and right. I'm not just saying it, it's like for everyone, it's just saying, um, like right. people don't understand the training that we go through right, and, right. Right. It is something that we have to go through before we actually can even go into the ring because we don't want to injure ourselves. We don't want to injure somebody else. Oh, no, naturally. Um, naturally, no. Even yeah. in training, um, there's been times where a new person was there and they didn't, like, they weren't sure what, like, they were a little bit nervous about what to do and mm -hmm. how to hold, like, hold, how to do, like, suplexes kind of thing. And, like, when I when they come up to me who's experienced, um, I had one person who flipped me over and they threw, like, they let go of me midway and I went flying across the um, oh. ring and he was like, oh, God, is she okay? And I was just like, um, and the trainer was like, she's fine. She knows how to, um, she knows how to, like, right. to uh, you land. You know how to land, right? But right. he goes, you shouldn't have let go of her because you let go of her too early that she went flying. Mm -hmm. And luckily you've got somebody who actually knows what they're doing to protect themselves. Right, um, right, right, right. You know, right. if it was if it was a new person, a new person, it might have got turned out as well. As That's we, right. Because That's right. we, we go, 
I think I did like three months of intense training before I even stepped foot in the ring. Um, Okay, so just just like uh, just like uh, a regular military boot camp, right? Yeah, That they go like, through. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. because yeah. as I said, you have to make sure that you're you're going to be um, safe in the ring. Um, but as I said, even in training, some accidents do happen. Like I popped my shoulder out, popped back in um, because one of the girls hadn't trained for a while. So she went to do a suplex on me and she took me the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Oh, And okay. I saw it coming and it was either going to be my neck or my shoulder. So I like instantly, I've just gone like that. Yeah. And it was my shoulder and it popped out. Sure. I popped back Oh, in yeah. straight away. Yeah. Yeah. But We finished the match still. I was like, I'm winning this. Like, <laughs> I still, I still rolled her up, and because we would, we do Yeah. practice matches and stuff, and Yeah. I I'm rolled not. her up with Yeah. that arm. And Yeah. um, when she got up, as soon as like you know the one, two, three happened, and she was like, Oh God, I'm so sorry. I'm like, It's fine. And then next minute, my my arm, like, because the adrenaline came down, my arm just seized up, and I couldn't move it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So So, it's. so it was like. it was just like you know I'm not going to let a little arm or shoulder injury uh, mess with me. I'm gonna I'm gonna win this thing. I'm going going to see it through to the end. You know, pain pain Most, or no pain, right? yeah, well, most times if you're in a ring, um, training is different, but if you're in the ring in front of, like, people, a crowd, obviously we can't just stop the ring, just um, stop the ring, stop the, um, stop the match just because somebody's injured. Like, I've had, I've seen guys who have uh, sprained, like, sprained their wrists and they're, st they're holding their wrists to their body and they just keep going. Um There's only the odd occasion where if you literally have broken something um, or you literally have, you can't move, like Mm -hmm. you physically can't move, then we stop the, stop the match. oh yeah But naturally yeah yeah it's otherwise, if you can still move, they just say, walk it off. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's that right was the, yeah, okay it was literally, right that was the, um, the aim. Like you, you can't, like they said, you can't just stop a match unless you can't move. And if you're like, if you literally can't move and you're physically down, mm -hmm. you, you walk it off and you just keep going until the match finishes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you were saying before, if somebody got in there that wasn't trained or anything, you know, somebody like me or something, uh, I, I, I would definitely know that, uh, like even before anything started, if I walked in between the ropes, get in a ring, uh, I know that they would probably have to start engraving my gravestone as soon as I crossed over, and over into the ring, and that would be inevitable right there. So you know, no doubt about it. Uh, Uh, no, I was just going to ask you before, uh, like, you know, you were talking uh, choreograph versus, uh, you know, actual fighting when you do have to do it. Uh, a, a very long time ago on American television, uh, there was this one uh, uh, weekly documentary uh, news show, and uh, they were uh, 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 looking into the topic of whether, like, wrestling is, like, real or fake. And, and uh, uh, there happened to be this one news reporter And I think it was maybe in between matches or after a match or before a match, they were like in the hallway uh, before he went to the into the arena. And so he was doing like an investigative report. Is it real or is it not? So uh, this one, I mean, he, he was like a rock and a Hulk type, Hogan type guy. I mean, he towered. News reporter was like, you know, skinny. I mean, he might have been tall, but, you know, a rock-like or a, a Hulk-like was like way, you know. And so, he, you know, he posed the question to this wrestler, and I says to myself, that's the wrong guy to ask this question, whether it's real or not. So what the wrestler did is he cut both of his hands, and he hit the news reporter on the head right over the ears. He Mm -hmm. went just like that, and from then on, That news reporter always had trouble with his hearing. He did. He did it. He did it. For, I forget who the news reporter was, who the who the wrestler was, but he hit him so hard that he actually, like I says, he actually lost a lot of his hearing the rest of his life. And and Yeah, that is so, like that is true. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that that kind of drove the point home that yes, there is the real element to that along. like you were saying, the choreographed uh, part like that. So uh, 
Uh, before you got, well, like you said, the big influence for you was The Rock. So uh, when you've seen him and the eyebrow and everything like that. So uh, before you've seen him, uh, you know, like when you were growing up in like in school, you know, as a kid in school, uh, uh, did they have anything, say, like uh, like wrestling teams or anything that uh, did you get into any like wrestling uh, before, you know? really have that at my school okay um okay. we didn't really have any wrestling yeah. at my at, um any school that i went to okay because um, yeah because i know yeah. over here over here uh uh you know uh, kids uh kids start wrestling like like early you know they call it like peewee wrestling or something yeah. like that but then when they get into high school that's when they start getting serious about it uh uh, uh more so uh the boys i don't i don't think there is yet I might be mistaken, but a million years ago when I went to school, back when, you know, uh, we lived in caves way, way back then, <laughs> uh, uh, there was only the boys wrestling team, you know, no girls wrestling or, you know, uh, no uh, uh, like uh, co-ed leagues or anything like that. So, uh, no, I just thought I'd ask you uh, whether or not there was anything organized like that in school. Um, for... Not at my schools, no, that yeah. I know of. Um, but I'm sure if you wanted to do it, you, like if your kid wanted to do it, you could find a school oh, yeah. that does oh, definitely. for it. Definitely. But um, at the schools that I went to, um, it was it was just like normal sports. Uh, oh, stuff. Okay. But, okay. Yeah, it's it will be probably something that wouldn't be taught at a school. It would be more that you'd have to do outside of a school. Right, 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 so, right. Just or like, it's like, yeah, it's like with martial arts. Like if you wanted to do um like karate yeah um, i was just yeah i was i was yeah, just going to mention that yeah 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 i was just going to mention uh mention that about like the martial arts and things like that so uh So now, yeah, you had uh, uh, you had your uh, uh, five year uh, wrestling uh, wrestling career, and so uh, you're you're also you're also a writing now, uh, and and have been a writer for a while. And uh, uh, the topic that comes to mind is that uh, uh, you back in 2022. Uh, you co-authored uh, 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 the romance book, uh, Rebel Romance, Stories of Unconventional Taboo and Wild Romance uh, by writing uh, chapter four, which was part of many, many chapters, yeah. ch chapters in the book. And so uh, the book came out on February 14th, 2022, Valentine's Day. That's a very good coincidence for a romance <laughs> For a romance book to come out on Valentine's Day, that you know that was that was good timing there for the publisher, yes. <laughs> and at that time it was available in hard copy or ebook uh, yeah. on uh, Amazon.com, and so um, in one of your uh, uh, Instagram story posts, you mentioned uh, about that that you realize uh, that like any person shouldn't be ashamed of their past, uh, and that. Each of us has a story to tell, and and we we deserve to say it. Yeah. And then uh, in another Instagram post, uh, you commented that uh, rebel romance is about uh, a creative and uh, sensual self expression. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see, it's about uh, stepping into your own sensual power. Uh, mm -hmm. It's about owning pleasure as a sacred act, and it's also. Uh, a steamy read for its own pleasure. I took I took those words right out of that post. So, uh, <laughs> and have you um, read it? Have you read the chapter? Uh, your chapter, yes, I have. <laughs> oh. uh, I, <laughs> I, I'm not going to divulge what it's about. I'm going to let everybody out there make their own 
their their own reading of it. So uh, yes, I yes I did read it. Uh, the chapter it was very good. Uh, excellent, excellent <laughs> it's uh, writing. A, it's and, actually based on a true story. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, which which I've been told by uh, by someone. Yes, I who <laughs> would that. <laughs> but uh, but so what I'd what I'd like to know is what um, what event in your life made you realize that uh, that you wanted and needed to write this chapter for in the romance book and um, do people still have because uh, in the Instagram post uh, back then people had to message you if they wanted a copy so do they still have to yes. message you direct. If um, if they want yeah. a hard copy, yeah, they still do. Yeah, I've got some copies left. Um, and uh, yeah, they'll have to just contact me. Um, okay. For hard copies, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, what made me want to do the chapter? Um, I think it was just more at the time I was just exploring myself as a woman and um. It's always been one of those things where it's been a bit taboo to talk about your mm -hmm. sexuality, to talk about, um, you know, writing about, you know, sexy stuff, you know. Yes. <laughs> um, and I just thought to myself, you know what, I'm, I'm, to, I'm at a point in my life where I'm comfortable with who I am, comfortable mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what I do in my life and I have nothing to be ashamed of and nothing to, you know, um, I just, I feel like everyone should just be express, be able to express themselves, right, whether right, it's right. writing about, um, like a sexy topic, whether it's about writing in, um, a, a novel of, you know, TV shows or, you know, um, mm -hmm. fiction, nonfiction, like it's, I just feel like everyone should be able to just express themselves right. and, one of my friends, um, she was one of the co-writers in the book as well. And she said to me, look, I've got um, a spot free. Uh, do you want to take it? And, you know, we'll, we're going to make it, try to make it, you know, the top, one of the bestsellers. And it actually did end up being um, one of the best, um, bestsellers. In yes, I, I know it did very well. Yes, it did. Yeah, yeah. Um, And she just, I just said to her, look, I just, I feel like I need to do it because, I've growing up, it's always been like, oh, you don't talk about that. Oh, you don't talk about that. I'll oh, keep that to yourself. Keep that to yourself. And mm -hmm, I just thought to mm -hmm. myself, you know what? I'm comfortable who, as I said, comfortable with who mm -hmm. I am, comfortable talking about what I want to talk about. Right, and right, right. I've had experiences, as I said, it's based on a true story. So I thought, you know what? Why don't I just say this story? And, you know, it's based on a true story. And, um, it was a fun night, I guess. So, <laughs> you know, um, well, it, 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 it was sort of based on a string of, of true stories, right? Like a whole string of yeah. true stories. It, it, it sort was, of like went from, it sort of like went from one to the other. And it was like one, sort of like a continuous, uh, sort of like a continuous story, right? But many, yeah. sto many individual stories within the whole, within the whole story, right? Yeah. It's it's um it is you're right it is a few little stories in in there but it's based on um this one it, one night event mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. it's the little stories that kind of lead up to it because I couldn't just get straight into it and just be like this is what we did yeah um, right. yeah 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 I had yeah. to give a little bit of you know some information beforehand like you know and then um yeah it was just um it was just to a point where. I was just, I read it back and I was like, ooh, that's naughty. That's really <laughs> naughty. Cool. And I had so much support with the guys that um, was doing the, what we all did the writing with. And uh -huh, uh -huh. It just, it helped me kind of express like myself at the time. Okay. And okay. it just made me realize that I don't have to feel ashamed or I don't have to feel awkward or embarrassed to talk about any topic right in, right right and so, there's no regrets either because I don't really like to have my life with regrets and mm, I feel mm, like I yeah. can like as I said anyone should be able to express themselves and whatever way that they feel comfortable right, so right that that's that was, the worst that, that's the worst thing to have to go through life is like reg like uh regretting something that uh, you wish you didn't do or regretting something 
that you wish you had done, yeah. right? I mean, both sides of the coin, right? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, it kind of, yeah, go oh, ahead. Sorry. Oh, um, it kind of brings back to the book I'm writing about wrestling as well, because um, in in there, I was like, I won't say the whole story, obviously, but the um, another part of the reason why I did the um, did that romance book was because. It, while I was wrestling, I got so much like hate, so much bullying from the actual people um, I wrestled with because they were so jealous of how much the crowd hated me, or because they I was doing better, or you know right, I don't think right, I, right. I don't compare myself yeah. to anyone. Right, you were but, getting all you were you were getting all the attention, right? Because yeah. of how good you were, right? Yeah. Yeah, and as I said, I don't compare myself. It's you know. I, like now if somebody's jealous they're jealous it's not my problem like um it's it's a them issue that's right <laughs> that's right that's right and you know at the time i was so like i was bullied i was like put down for um having a relationship in um wrestling and it was that was another reason why i kind of wanted to set, tell the story because um it's it kind of like I, when I was reading back because I'm still I'm um, nearly finished the book, so mm -hmm. um, I was reading back on a lot of the things and a, one of the main um, topics was that it made people made me feel ashamed of you know wanting to date somebody in wrestling or you know liking someone in wrestling um, mm -hmm. made me feel ashamed of some actions that I did and you know I'm not innocent I you know I did do I didn't do the right didn't make the right um, the right choices in life um, at that time but I owned up to it and that's why another reason is because of those um, issues that they had that they perceived onto me was mm -hmm. that I was like you know what I'm not um, ashamed of what I've done um, as in if I chose different choices I would choose different choices now but back then I I did the choices that I wanted to do right and yeah. you know it's it may be to the person who I am today mm -hmm. and I shouldn't be ashamed or have anyone else make me feel ashamed of my choices yes not all of them were good not all of them were right, right. what I did well, yeah not, oh, none of us make none of us make perfect choices mm -hmm. uh, some sometimes we do but that's few and far between but yeah. yeah yeah and this is the thing that um it's also a growth in myself um from the wrestling time uh when I was wrestling and those choices that I did make poor or good or not it was just I made those choices at the time and I stand by it in the book as well I, I say to my I say in the book like you know I would probably not make those choices now because mm -hmm. I'm a different mm -hmm. person I've grown as a person I've grown as a woman I've grown mm -hmm. Um, and got to know who I am um, but those choices that I made at the time I felt I needed to make and if I didn't make those choices I wouldn't be who I am today that's right so, that's right that's right uh, well yeah. uh, like like at every instances uh, every every instance in each of our lives at the time we make the best choices that we know how with what we know and what we have at our disposal, right? We can't we can't do anything beyond that, right? I mean, we can only do as best that we think it's for ourselves at the time. Or like like you said, sometimes maybe you might think back and well, maybe I shouldn't have made that. Oh, but right. at the time, <laughs> you don't know that. I mean, yeah. it's it, you might be like ten or fifteen years in the future looking back, but at the time that you're living through that ten or fifteen, you don't have that. Uh, uh, that clairvoyance where you can look into the future and say, oh, yeah, yeah. gee, if I make this choice now, geez, look, look, look what's going to happen to me in the future. Yeah. But but that's very, very true. Uh, and, and then you were going, uh, you were saying about like the relationship within your profession there. Uh, people were very critical of that. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of professions uh, where uh, there are relationships. I mean, not only in wrestling, other, yeah. you know, I mean, other professions as well. So, uh, that's, I mean, that's, that's pretty common. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's nothing out of the ordinary. Just, I mean, just because, just because you were, you know, in wrestling, uh, like I said, it happens in a lot of other professions. So yeah. it's, and it's like it's nothing um, out of the ordinary. Yeah. No, because like with wrestling, it takes over a lot of your life, um, as well. So. You basically work. I go home, look after, like, see my dog, and then when you go out to wrestling, you're wrestling. Like, 
your training you're seeing those people every day so you know it's not really there's no way like leeway for you to meet other people unless you mm. cut down your life in wrestling and yeah I think I think at the time as well when I did write the novel the um, chapter I was wanting to be a rebel and be like <laughs> you can't stop me from saying what I want to say now um but it just it's you know I don't regret like, yes, I kind of go, God, what was I thinking dating that person? My God, I wouldn't do that now. But right, right. at the time, as I said, it made me the person I am today. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. these choices we have to make to grow as a person if That's we right. choose to. That's right. Because and I, yeah, and I think people that uh, uh, that uh, uh, have read your, uh, your chapter in that book and then like all the other chapters of all the other talented yes. authors uh, – uh, uh, it, uh it, it's uh sort of a it's a vehicle to help other people maybe with their struggles they they read your chapter and then the other chapters of all the other authors in that book and and it, it helps them in some way probably solve a life problem yeah. you know like that yeah. It reminds me of a conversation I had a few days ago where one of the guys from wrestling contacted me and I don't know why I don't know it was just really random. I haven't spoken to him for years and it's like random. And then he was in some ways, in a nice way, trying to have a go at me for dating in wrestling. Oh. And I was like, I literally just said to them, are you still going on about that? Like, can you guys grow up? Like, it's in the past for one, two, I'm not ashamed of it. And three, get over it. Like, people are going to date. It's, and they're like, oh, no, no, I'm not saying it. I'm like, no, no. I don't really like what the difference is with me now is that I will say my piece and mm -hmm. that you can say your piece. We don't have to agree. That's right. But I'm not saying, like I used to get walked over. I used to, um, I used to, as I said, used to get bullied. I used to get walked all over all the time. You never had a voice when I was wrestling. I used to just like, if somebody said, you do this now, even if I didn't want to do it, I'd be like, oh, okay, you know, worries. Now, if, if I don't agree with something, I'd be like, no, I'm not comfortable with that. Thanks. No, I'm not doing it. Mm -mm. Right, and right. if I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. Like right. if I doesn't feel right within my um myself and my what I um what your my idea, values are, yeah, your ideals, right? You don't do yeah, it, right? Then right. it's not going to happen because right. I'm stuck. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> I'd be like, nah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, well, yeah, uh, just. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you were saying uh, uh, the the other book you're writing now. That the other book. Well, you're you're in the process of uh, finishing or, or yeah. pretty much. Uh, now is that's exclusively about your life as uh, uh, Queen uh, Queen Bianca. Yeah, Cent centers around that. Yeah. Okay, it's centered around that. It has a little bit of um at the beginning has a little bit about me as a child. So to see why I was like. Uh, why I was kind of walked all over, why I didn't have a voice. It kind of shows a little bit of, okay, this is like, you know, she's, she grew up, she grew up like saying yes, ma'am, no, ma'am kind of thing. And yes, sir, no, sir. Um, kind of just doing what other people wanted me to do. So then it kind of grew into my adult life. Okay. And okay. Now that uh, I'm getting my voice or I've got my voice now, it's like um, people don't always like that. And it's for me, this book really means a lot to me because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I went through hell and back to get to the place I am today. That's right. And That's right. As you probably would know, I've probably spoken to you about this, like my little dog, like my little pooch, like oh, Gabriel. Oh, yes. He's been dear, my rock. Dear, 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 dear Gabe. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. He's been my rock. He's been, he's got me through those tough times because uh -huh, they uh -huh. always come into your life for a reason. Um, and his name's Gabriel. Um because of the archangel and right, but he's, right. my, he's, he's my Gabriel. Um, he's my messenger of love because that's what he taught me. Um, I had no self-worth. I had no self-love in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's why I let people just use and abuse and um, like talk down to me, you know, walk all over me, bully me because mm -hmm. I didn't know my worth at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, whether you're, you're a man, woman, whatever it's like, I, you have the, you should learn your worth and, um, stand up for what you believe in and yep, just, definitely and yeah that is just literally finding your worth as a person and just believing in yourself and going you know what I deserve better than this I deserve to be treated like mm -hmm. um I, I say to myself every day now I deserve to be treated like a queen because that's what I am 
So mm -hmm. um, I might not be Queen Bianca anymore, but I'm still, <laughs> I'm still a queen because I treat myself like that and I deserve to be treated like that's a right. queen. That's so, right. That's right. You got to yeah. you got to think of yourself and be confident of yourself in that way. And then that will automatically uh, 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 portray that type of person that you have become to other people. Where they yeah. know that you're you're your own person and yeah. uh, you make your own decisions and aren't uh, influenced uh, to act any any way contrary to uh, to what you what believe. You believe. Yeah. So, yeah. so so that's this this one re means a lot to me um, because as I said I went through hell and back mm -hmm. to get to the person I am today mm -hmm. and I wouldn't have been able to do it without Gabriel. He is the love of my life and, you know, he's just that one um, thing I can come home to every day and mm -hmm. he's always excited to see me. And, <laughs> and it's just like we just, i got to, like, he's a, I appreciate him so much and he's obviously in the book, of course, but it's like I have to also do it for myself because I did it for him when I was back in wrestling. I said I wanted to be the happy version of myself for you, like for him. And I couldn't do it for me. I had to do it for him. But now yeah. I do it for myself now because I I know my worth. I know I'm a queen and I deserve mm -hmm. to be happy. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I want to just show people, like inspire people to be the best versions of right, themselves. Right, and right. with my right. story, it's like seeing from when I where I used to be to the path that I had um, right up now. to now. And mm -hmm. I hope it inspires people. Oh, I think it will. I, I know it will. I know it will each of those. <laughs> Are you cheating on me? What? No. Why would you even think that? Every day it gets later and later. I never get to see you. I know something's up and I want to know what. Did you happen to talk to Chuck today? Chuck? What about him? Just tell me the truth. I know something's up with you. Look, I need to know if you've talked to Chuck today. I tried calling him, but he didn't Stop answer. avoiding the subject. We're talking about you and I. Just answer the question. Did you happen to talk to Chuck or not? Get out. Babe. Don't babe me. Get the hell out of my apartment. Don't call me and do not. Each of the, and then in your your further development from wrestling, and then it took you into writing, and yeah. then um, uh, eventually uh, you went uh, into uh, or which you still still are uh, like uh, uh, acting and uh, acting and uh, modeling. I see a lot of uh, posts and and photos mm -hmm. of your modeling and your acting, and and uh, most recently. Uh, it was a December 2023. You were you were cast in the film uh, Loaded Desperation, and it wrapped in uh, December 2023. And uh, which I thought was amazing. You you choreographed some of the fight scenes, and that was uh, uh, the first time that uh, uh, you choreographed uh, in a film. So um, if you could tell us a little bit about what that film was about, uh, what um, what character you played and what well I actually did um two films um uh, last year as well actually um there was two um two fight scenes that I did and then um the other one where I choreographed as well so it was two um two movies that are coming out hopefully this year but um with the um uh, loaded one it was I was it was kind of like we're all bandits in there and you know we have to just it's like a fight for our lives kind of situation and uh, I don't want to give too much away but no, no, doing, no. The, <laughs> doing the choreography it was it was so fun to do it felt like back at wrestling like you know um <laughs> it was different though because um like the person I did the wrestling um the wrestling um uh, the fight scene with uh the girl she was she's never had experience before oh okay so, okay uh, i see i see i see in that one post you had her pinned down to the floor i says yeah go yeah. queen bianca go go <laughs> go go you know that was um yeah it was literally like um that one 
she she just had no idea what to do and um I had to show her how to hit and show her um like how to um like take like how to hit each other without hurting each other and so it was it was a really good it was a good fight scene that I did and um the the director Nathan he was really like proud of everything that we did there and Mm -hmm. um yeah he's he's a he's one amazing director as well Mm -hmm. um and then the other one um that I did was um another like we did fight scenes in there as well and I've got um the other film that uh like so I've got loaded uh, deception and then bitter desires as well so um that they're both coming out hopefully this year and it was fun to do like it was really fun um the loaded one I w- had two fight scenes with um a girl and a um and a guy as well and then yeah um choreographed mm-hmm. the other one too mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yeah um it was yeah, it was really fun. Like, <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, it looked like you had have fun. I, I think I remember, like, in that uh, load of desperation uh, post, there, the, there was like uh, three different photos that you were like in in different uh, like fighting positions. But I know it's like one of them is like, uh, you know, it's like you had her pinned down to the floor, and that's when I kept cheering. I says, I says. You know, even though these are photos, I haven't seen the film. I says I know how this fight's going to turn out. I know. I, those, I, I know. Actually, she... actually, those ones were for the bitter, um, bitter desires. Actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bitter desires. So bitter desires is that one that um, I'm on top with with her, um, like, like when I'm on top of her, like punching. Um, and then, yeah, it was the other one uh, was for Loaded was where I had, like, the the blood on the face. Oh, boy, <laughs> I says to myself, I says, I says, man, I says, she's really messed up there. And then it's like, oh, no, wait a minute. That's all that's all fake stuff. You know, I mean, you had you had it like on all of your face, your forehead. Yeah. It's like an arm says, and everything. And, uh, yeah. Didn't you have didn't you have a caption on there? Something like uh, uh, you should uh, uh or a comment somewhere it's like you should have seen the other guy or something (laughs) i says yeah "Yeah." i says man i says if you looked like that i says i wouldn't want to see what the opponent looked like that's i mean (laughs) (laughs) no because we had a um for loaded we have we had a really um amazing um she was like a makeup artist and she did like all these like different i don't know what it would be called like it was just different, like, um, if we had, like, a gunshot, if we had, like, if we needed to do blood and coming out of our mouths and stuff, like, she was just an amazing um, oh, artist. okay, okay. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was the, really did they, fun. Like, uh, for your mouth, say, like, if you got hit, did they, uh, did they have anything, like, uh, say, like, a capsule or something in your mouth where you, like, would bite on as soon as they hit you, and then once you clenched on the capsule you know, the blood would spurt out. Was there anything like that or or no? No, not that we had. Um, okay. So because the way that I, like, with wrestling, the way that I learned is that if I get hit, I go, like, I follow it through. So I'm not gonna, just going to stand there, and, like, you know, I'm going to follow it through. So if they hit me, I'm going like that. And so then they'll, cu- um, they'll put, like, they'll, they'll, um, they'll cut there. Right, and right. To do the next, like, little fight bit, then they'll put like blood all over, oh, okay. Um, okay. like coming out of our mouth and stuff. And then um, they'll we'll go back into the position, and then I come back and I've got the blood coming out. Oh, everywhere. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. So Shouldn't give it too. I don't want to give too much away. No, but... no, 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 no. Anytime I go like that, that means Natalie, don't <laughs> say anymore. Don't say anymore. Don't say anymore. You know. Yeah. No, that that kind of reminds me. Years and years ago, you were saying to kind of like go with the punch. Uh, I was in a, uh, uh, I was in a musical, uh, uh, Pirates of Penzance, uh, yeah. Soldiers of, uh, you know, uh, of Fortune, things like that. So it's like, it's like uh, I was uh, like I had to play like one of the pirates on the ship, and so uh, the ship gets, uh, you know, gets uh, taken over, and so there's like a fight scene that ensues or something, and so uh, in the choreography, like my character and other characters. Uh, there was never any chore- uh, uh, choreography uh, where 
where I got punched, you know, I mean, you know, it's, you know, scuffling and back and forth, but it's never, you know, like that. So uh, one of the actors that I uh, had the uh, a scene, there was like a whole group of us and we were sort of like each paired off. So it was only supposed to be like a little scuffle. And uh, it wasn't, it wasn't like, like, uh, like a cold cock back and then wham like that. I mean, it was something that maybe was half as much, but it's like, you don't expect it. And it's like, after the hit, you go like that. It's like, what the heck, you know, you know, uh, but that, that there wasn't Corey, that there wasn't choreographed. So, uh, I felt it for maybe about that much. I didn't expect it. And I says, well, okay. But that, that was like the only, uh, I don't know. We had maybe, I don't know, three, four, five, six performances, but that one performance was, Uh, I think he realized what he did in that one performance. So he was like pretty careful. He was pretty careful that he didn't do it again, you know, in the other, you know, uh, uh, four or five like that. But uh, oh, because then you, um, as we would say in wrestling, if um somebody hit you hard, then um, like you can give it back to them as a receipt. Like, oh. so sometimes, sometimes <laughs> is... you did come across some people who were a little bit stiff in the ring. And like, just say if somebody like smacks me, and I'm just like, oh, ow, that really hurt. Like, right, right, right. Um, I can just give them one and be like, don't do that again. And right. <laughs> well, and it never, not, it never, it never not that did. I wanted to, but yeah, no, no. Like I says, it never did get to that point. But he realized what he had done, so he didn't do it again. I mean. Uh, he kind of figured that out all on his own. He didn't need any help to figure it out. So uh, they usually do. They usually do. They um. There's been some times in the ring where you go, "Oops, I'm so sorry. That was really yeah, funny. right. Like, yeah, that's, this that's, was exactly yeah, again. exactly the uh, the same situation there." <laughs> you knew about this this whole time. You didn't say anything. Oh, God, James, I'm so sorry. No Explain explanation will ever take away the pain. Of all these years, the lawyers will be in contact with you tomorrow. James, no, no. I have decided to keep him. No. He's all I got. Oh, no. It's over, Jenny. It's over. I thought Tim was all we needed to be a family, but clearly you don't understand the meaning of a family. And I'm afraid no one can ever teach you that. I'm sorry. So, 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 yeah, uh, 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 you, uh, you've been a wrestler, a, a writer, uh, uh, you're acting and, um, uh, uh, you do a lot of, uh, uh posts like, uh, uh, like about your modeling, uh, one post where, uh, you were modeling, uh, uh, around a, a sports, sports car. I think that was like yeah. from last year, right? It was like a, yeah. like, like a model shoot, uh, from last year. And, um, I was just wondering now, since you're also uh, uh, doing like modeling, uh, will you also keep pursuing your your acting career? Will it be like fifty percent modeling, fifty percent acting, um, or acting's more important to me? Okay. Um, so I would do probably more acting. I still do modeling, but acting will probably be the main thing that I want. I would do so. Um, that's. That's like, because I wanted to do acting since I was four years old. So it was even, I think, before I even wanted to be a wrestler. So I just never had the confidence to do acting because I was okay. like, oh, what if I stuff it up? What if, you know, I make a fool of myself? You know, I was very shy because I just thought, oh, I'm not good enough for this. And then um, when I started working on myself, I was just like, no, I am good at this. So Right. Um, when you realize that, that's the ticket right there. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah why? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I still do modeling, but it won't be like, it wouldn't be comparison. Like if I if I um had the chance to do both, um I would do both. But if I had mm -hmm. to choose, like if it was like you have to do modeling or acting, I would choose acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In yeah. other in other words, way way back when when uh uh when you uh when when you first got interested in it, like like we say we've we've been bitten by the acting bug, the acting bug. And mm -hmm. I know I was first uh, bitten by the acting bug, like uh, when I was 13. 
and uh, I've never recovered from that virus since. I've had that. I've, I've got bitten once, and that's. I've never recovered. I've never recovered. So uh, <laughs> well, it's probably I'm a good virus. <laughs> What's probably that? A good virus. It's probably a good virus to have. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's. I don't want to get better. I don't want to get better. Yeah. Don't you know, get better. <laughs> doctors, stay away. I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to be cured. Uh, yeah. In fact. Uh, when I did get uh, uh, bitten by the acting bug, like I said, you know, like when you, uh, when you're in grade school, early grades, you know, you, you you have like the school plays, you know, holiday play. But but this was like uh, like I said, I was like 13 years old, and so uh, uh, we had this English teacher, me and uh, two friends of mine, and so uh, she was in charge of uh, of uh, casting, like uh, uh, say like a, a like a semi-annual uh, play or a skit. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if she chose us or if we volunteered, but somehow or other, they were both my best friends, two of my best. We all got chosen for the play. Forget how it happened there. And so uh, th that was it. I mean, the first time on stage, it's like, I says, I says, man, I says, I'm home. That's it. And uh, it just happened to be, and I still have a copy of the script. It was a play about the three little pigs. Ah. And so it had like uh, like a Chinese spin on of it. And instead of being called the three little pigs, it was called the three swine of most small stature. And it had that title to it. Ah. So, so when the when the skit began, the three of us, we're on stage, the three little pigs or the three little swine. And so our my very first words on stage as an actor was oink. That was my first my that was my first line, oink. I said <laughs> oink. Number two said oink. Pig number three said oink. So we went oink, oink, oink. And then from there on, I was I, I was bitten. I was just bitten yeah. like that. So but I know uh uh, yeah, I know, I know the, I know the feeling completely like that, but, uh, but no, that's, I mean, that's, that's good that, you know, you have that balance with, uh, like you said, even though you prefer acting, you still have the balance and the, you know, the choice, the option, uh, acting or modeling and things like that. And to take your acting even further, uh, I noticed in one of your posts earlier this year, you did a commercial for Jim, Jim's cleaning. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, there was a promotional photo from that shoot that was mm -hmm. on a big billboard. You remember that? Yeah. The big yeah. billboard in your post? And so that was visible from, uh, I can't remember the bridge that you mentioned, but it was like a like a boat Bolte. bridge in, in Melbourne. The Bolte. Um, the Bolte Bridge. The Bolte Bridge. The Bolte Bridge. So, and... I seen that post and it was like a video and, you know, uh, I don't know how uh, it, it's like, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if it was you or somebody else in the in the car, but, you know, you were cheering uh, this and that. You know, cause it was, yeah, because it was you. It was you up on a billboard. So yeah. so when you seen that like big picture that like larger than life picture of, of yourself, like on a big billboard advertising for Jim's cleaning. How did that make you feel? I mean, I think I know how it made you feel because I could hear the hollers and the screams. <laughs> but I mean, what was that like seeing you up yourself up there? Um, it was amazing. It was my first billboard. I plan on being on more. <laughs> I know I will. Um, see, I know I will see you on more definitely. <laughs> but it was um, it was funny. Like it was over Easter, I think last year. And my friend, she calls me and she's like, "Have you done a, a an ad for Jim's cleaning?" And I was like, "Yeah." And she's like. Are you high fiving a guy? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, oh my <laughs> God, you're on the Bolte Bridge, like the billboard. I was like, what? And um, so the next day, she <laughs> she picked me up and we went for a drive to um to go see it. <laughs> and I was sitting like, I probably shouldn't say it because I was sitting in the front seat and because we stopped at a red light and she's like, get to the back, get to the back because then you can take a video. Um, right, and right, I'm right. Like, so I, we're at the lights, uh, we're stopped, but um, I get into the back seat and I'm just like, she goes, 
there's no one around. Okay, do it, do it. And so I had to, you know, I put my seatbelt back on and everything. And um, and then as soon as like we we're coming up, she goes, okay, it's coming up, it's coming up. And I was like, as soon as I was filming, I was like, <laughs> 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 you know, I, um, I know I could I could hear somebody saying something, but it's like yeah. whoever it was. I mean, I kind of thought I assumed it was you, but I I think I knew it was you because seeing yourself and it's like. <laughs> I don't know. It's like b between like uh, screaming and howling and yeah. this and that. I says, I says, I says, I says, that that's got to be Natalie. I says that's got to be Natalie. Seen herself up there, uh, up there uh, the first time. Yeah, it yeah. was definitely me. Um, yeah. and I took photos. I took a video. Um, and I actually still see myself. It's I'm still up on the um, on billboards at the moment. Oh, re so, oh, for uh, for Jim's cleaning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really good. And I've been tagged in a few things where like our um, radio stations um, in, in Melbourne, they um, they do like online stuff and it's like they did like an ad for um, Jim's cleaning and it was me standing there. <laughs> <laughs> and one of my friends tagged me. They're like, this is, is this you? And because I had different hair. I had lighter hair back then. Oh, okay. So okay. People were like, I, said, I know that face, but is that not or is that not so they tag me and they're like is this you I'm like yeah <laughs> they all see me now with dark hair that when I at the time I had light hair and they're like what like, oh right 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 yeah, right. So, yeah um yes yeah. yeah, it's, it's really like I can't wait to be on more it's just it's one amazing feeling to just sure. like even though um like you can just it's like a side profile but, yeah, well, you can, t I mean, you you can tell it's you. I mean, yeah. I, you know, you can see it. Yeah. I mean, you can, you know, even at, even at a quick glance, I mean, yeah. it's no doubt. Like, no doubt about it, it literally but. is. Because one of my, as I said, my friend was just driving on the Bolte Bridge and it was like a corner of her eye. She just looked and she's like, wait, wait, <laughs> what? And like, if she can recognize me from right? like, pro like my, my side profile, then it's, you know, people right? can um but yeah, yeah it was yeah. it was yeah she, she, she probably said my god I, I didn't know that I was going to be riding with a star today wow I know. wow yeah. I, know. Yeah. I, even, I think I even said that to her I said oh how do you feel like being with someone famous and she's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey get used to it Natalie yeah. get used to it you know you know the the words out and the photos out yeah. you know get used to it you know it's on the upward trajectory, you know. Only upwards now. <laughs> right, right, right. That reminds me just like one time, uh, you know, like one of these, uh, uh, like uh, 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 one of these courtroom shows that they have. And and now, like, uh, well, it was especially during COVID uh, when, like, all the studios were shut down and everything was, like, virtual. So, uh, like, instead of having like a uh, 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 guest audience, uh, they had uh, a bunch of uh, TV monitors in back of the, like the defendant and the plaintiff. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, I seen like an audition for one and uh, it says, uh, you know, we're, uh, I mean, it was like, it, it ended up being like a 10 or 12 hour day. Uh, mm -hmm. You had, a uh, they gave you some time off for lunch. And so, uh, uh, it was one of those uh, courtroom uh, television uh, shows. And so, uh, uh, in fact, uh, I was on it like uh, two different years in a row, like an episode, one episode. They got so many people vying for it that, you know, they can only fit you like on one episode. It's like, uh, so, uh, uh, you know, they hire you for the day and they're shooting like 10 episodes in one day, like one right after another, like a half hour episode. And so... Uh, uh, that was like like a year before, and I happened to be uh, like a, a get together with uh, some of my friends one time, and so this one friend of mine uh, said, uh, you know, he says Edward, he says, uh, <laughs> he says, uh, were you on television? And um, uh, I says, yeah. I says, you know, where'd you see me? He says, you know, he says. You know, like uh, one night, one afternoon, you know, I was sitting in my, uh, you know, Barca lounge here, you know, having a soda or something. And, you know, I just clicked on the uh, uh, one of those uh, court shows TV. And, you know, he says, you know, the camera that it kind of panned like from one video screen to the other. 
And he says, he says, geez, he says, that looks like Edward. That looks, he, he told me that that's what he was thinking to himself. He says, gee, so when we seen each other, he had to make sure. And so when he's, when I says, I says, yeah, I says, that was me. What? What? He kept going like that. Just, just like with you, with your friend, you know, taking the double look. So yeah. it's a great, it's a great feeling, isn't it's it? When somebody yeah. recognizes you, you know, and, and, and some other medium other than, be, than being live and in person. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so it was also, um, I used, I done some extra work as well because, you know, I wanted to work from the bottom to work my way up. So oh, yeah. I, wanted to, I wanted to do some extra work and we have this show um, in Australia called Neighbours and um, I was on Neighbours for a week being an extra and when it finally came to air, like everyone was like, oh, my God, is that Nat? Like messaging my mom, taking screenshots, sending it to me and I was like, yeah, it was me, it was me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Like I wasn't doing anything. I was standing behind the crew. Like I was standing behind the um the main uh, the main people. But right. I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm not there. It's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? like, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you didn't know that you had a star celebrity yeah, in the family, didn't like, you? You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing feeling, isn't it? It's like it is. It really is, and it's like it's almost surreal, isn't it? Like you never think. That yeah. uh, something like that will that will ever happen to you, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just uh, uh, just like. And did you? Just, yeah, go ahead. Did you did you see yourself on the show as well, or is it? Did you not watch the TV? No, TV? I did. Uh, well, uh, I could, I could see myself as it was being taped because it was just like this. It was like on Zoom, oh, yeah. so they isolated each one of us on our own screen, but we could see like the background and back of the plaintiff and the uh, defendant there. So, mm. uh, and they told us, whatever you do, do not look towards the camera. Don't look like you're looking for yourself in the shot, you know, and, <laughs> you know, just, just be a happy, look concerned all the time, look interested, you know, you know, don't like, you know, if Step maybe if there's, yeah, <laughs> if there's some point that it, might seem boring to you, you know, you know, don't go like that, you know, okay, now when are they going to get to the interesting part of this argument? They yeah. says, always look interested in this and that. So, uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's an absolutely great feel. Uh, like I said, surreal, uh, yeah. like a, a surreal experience. And, and this also is a surreal experience because yeah. like I was telling you before uh, we started the interview here that, uh, most of the people that I have on my program, most of my guests, I've met uh, only virtually first. Uh, and then uh, like different film festivals that I've been in, that uh, some of the actors uh, that, you know, that I interview um, or that, that I've been in like, say, like online film with, uh, they're like in the same film in the film festival. So when I very first, when I first seen the actual people that I'd only seen in the square beside me on the other side of the screen. It's like, my God, I says, that head's attached to a real body. You know, I, I couldn't get over it. I says, they're a real person. And it's, it was, uh, yeah. Well, just, yeah. just like seeing yourself on, on the big board or whatever. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 it's very, very. It'd, be, it'd be different as well. Seeing like from seeing us here and then meeting because then I'll be, you'd be like oh she's she's that tall or she's that small or you right, know, like, right 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 we, right we have to like perceive what we think that how tall you are or how tall I am and you know perceive what we look like that's um, right we'll see that's each other right. it's like oh it's that's right here. that's right yeah. that's right well like mm -hmm. even television that that uh sort of gives uh I don't know might give a person uh, like a false impression, like say, just like by the stature of somebody, how they, how they, uh, uh, you know, how they behave on camera that, you know, they might say, oh my God, he must be, you know, like, yay, yay, tall, you know, and then when they meet them, they're like this right. little guy that's like way down here. <laughs> like you know, that, that, that's not even as tall as a meter stick or something like that, you know, but. Oh, how did he get there? Why is there a snake in Morris's cage? 
I, he must have got in when I was taking a nap. When did you get a snake? Today. I thought if you can have a pet, I can have one too. Wait, wait a minute, there was a bulge in the snake's belly, Harmony. Mm. Your old snake ate my Morris. It's just a hamster. No, it is not just a hamster. He's my best friend. Oh, come on, Gordon. No, no, no. Don't, don't come on me, okay? You just... Don't, you know what? I'm moving out. I've, I've had it. Oh. Jasmine. What are you... Doing here? I thought you were... Dead. <laughs> we were always so good at finishing each other's sentences, weren't we? Once upon a time. Once upon a time, the good old days, where I can turn my back without the fear of you shoving a knife through it. But, but, but I mean, besides all that, uh, everything we've covered, uh, wrestling and acting and, and modeling and writing and everything, uh, you've also uh, begun to uh, take uh, uh, dance classes. I've, I've yeah. seen you post about that. And um, uh, all... <laughs> This, uh, aside from your acting career and everything else that you did, uh, you take uh, uh, dance classes. And uh, you also, uh, uh, did you like want to share anything? Talk about like your dancing, you know, the classes that you started to attend and uh, anything you might want to talk about with your dancing, you know, how you got interested and, you know. Well, um. I got interested because there was something that happened in 2022 that I think I spoke to you about that it was just, um, it wasn't very pleasant. So I felt like I lost who I was a little yes. bit. Yeah. Um, and I was just trying to find myself. And um, I found this dance class that was like um, a little bit sexy, you know, woman empowerment. And um, just, it's like, you know, you're just sexy dancing and there's no shame there's no like um, oh god they shouldn't be doing that or you know and it just appealed to me because I felt like I needed to find who I was again because I just I lost a little bit of me and um, when I went into the class and I was so like I didn't even know what to expect and then I ended up just I ended up film, filming my um, my the classes that I'm doing and I actually see that I'm actually not like, you know, um, too bad at it. Um, no, you're but... not, you're not bad at all. I mean, that's, <laughs> that, that, that's like, uh, 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 being an athlete in, yeah. in another realm. I mean, that's, yeah. that's being an athlete too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's I, could, also like... I, I couldn't move like that. If I tried <laughs> to move like the way you move on the floor and try to get up, they'd have yeah. to take me to the emergency room in the <laughs> hospital. So, uh, yeah, I um I have because uh, I used to when I was younger I used to always just dance to Britney Spears. Um, oh, so okay, yeah. Growing yeah. up, I used to dance all the time to her, so I feel like she conditioned me to be able to dance a little bit. So, okay. um, but it was just um it was just one of those things where I thought, you know what, um, because as you know, my little doggy, he's turning four, he's fourteen. Yes, um, yes, yes. He's, he's slowing down a little bit now. So, um, like, you know, he's, I think he's going to say goodbye to me one day. Um, and I just, for me, because I'm so connected to him, I just, I need a, like a little outlet where it's just about me for an hour and I can just do what I want, just have a little dance and feel good about myself. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's what the class brings. It's like, all the, all the ladies there, they're all so supportive. Um, they just they just cheer you on and make you feel so good. I always leave the room, um, leave the class, like feeling so good about myself, feeling yeah, so confident, yeah, so yeah, sexy. And yeah, um, yeah. that's sometimes we need to feel like as well. So um, like it just gives me some little outlet where I can mm -hmm. just do something for myself and just like feel feel good about myself again. So, that's right. That's right. Um, that's right. Yeah. That's right. And and you yeah. and and uh, and your dancing isn't that bad either. Uh, it's uh, it's it's better than that. It's it's <laughs> it's good. I mean, uh, you. you you shouldn't fe uh, feel self conscious about your dancing at all because, uh, well, uh, for the primary reason is because on those videos, 
I hear a whole bunch of people howling and yelling in the background. So it's like, yeah, it's like this girl's got it on. She's got it on, boy. You know, she, you're getting, you're getting the crowd all riled up, and it's uh, in the dance class. You know, they're hollering and hooting and cheering you on, and uh, yeah. and yeah, that's what you know. I love about it. Like you just, they're all so supportive, and you know, we just we're all there for each other and we just support each other. And yeah, it's, I can't like, I actually look forward to having my dance class. Like uh -huh. it's something that I look forward to every week and I'm starting off just doing one session a week because as I said, like my little, my little baby's going to, he's slowing down. So I want to be with him um, in this time. Um, but as I said, I just need that one hour just to focus on myself. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's just like, I might, I probably do more later on down the track, but at the moment I've got to also focus on Gabriel as well, and oh, he's sure. focused on me for his sure. whole life. So sure. I need to give, need him make sure he need him to make sure that I know, he, like he knows that he's loved, which he does. He knows oh, that. Oh yes, yeah. You know, and, yeah. But yeah. yeah, it's just yeah. that one hour, and it's just it's just so fun. Like yeah, I, yeah. As I said I come out there feeling like a like that I'm so confident and sexy and I'm like, oh you know? <laughs> well everybody else there thinks that you are, you know, so you are I mean so you are, you know. Yeah. So uh, well yeah, I mean that's uh prob is the reason that they started that class was sort of sort of like uh like uh I don't know like like a therapeutic atmosphere that was that in their minds when they started out that to kind of help um, help pe uh, help people along that way in addition to having them, them express themselves i mean through dance i think so i think that's where it started because um what the the little that the stuff that i know about the company is that um they really want to help women express themselves and feel good about themselves mm -hmm. feel confident not judged mm -hmm. and um just have a supportive um like friendship or supportive group of women that um, are all there for the same reasons of whether they feel, whether they're, you know, in their forties feeling like, you know, Oh, I had, you know, I feel so, so old maybe, or feeling so right. um, overweight or something. It's just a way for, you know, even for the young girls, like, um, okay. like, you know, who might not have the confidence to do dancing like that. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just, it's just to give the um give every women um all the women um some confidence and to feel good and feel sexy and mm -hmm. um to have the support that you know it's no judgment there's no judgment there there's no there's not you're not allowed to have any guys there um it's just um it's just no judgment and you just be able to express yourself and just be able to you know um like touch yourself in you know in a sexy you know sexy way and just be able to go like you know I, this is what I am this is what I'm a beautiful right. woman and right, right, you know right, right. um yeah. just feel sexy yeah yeah I was just going to ask you that before you started to <clears throat> talk about <clears throat> uh all all uh, all the different uh women that attend I was just going to ask you uh what what the uh what the age range was but you 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 uh said what like 20s 40s or 50s or you know you, it's it's, gone, it's right? um it's 18 and above um oh, okay I think okay it's it's not allowed under 18 only because it is quite sexy oh, um, okay. so, you know we don't want um the young girls to feel like they have to be like that um right so I think right it's, right it's from 18 and above right, um right, right. anyone can join anyone can do the classes as well mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. um it's it's as i said just to make you feel sexy make you feel confident and you yeah, know yeah like just be able to express yourselves and that's right. something that i very much value in in myself as well because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um you need to express who you are you need to you shouldn't hide yourself you should oh, be no. able to express what you feel and no, not um, at all. you not know at in a all. healthy way so right right plus the fact probably um uh, i don't know if there might be some of them that sign up for it maybe they sort of have like a, like a physical problems like with movement and it, uh, sort of like like a physical therapy they probably they don't, don't i don't think they have like physical therapy i think it's more um it's more just um like you have to have certain kind of you can't be if you're if you've got like 
you know, a, a ways that you can't get up and stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. some kind. Of, they can they can change the like a routine for the certain oh, people. Okay. Um, okay. but you know, it is something to it is because you're moving, you're dancing, you're yeah. gonna like yeah, something yeah. to get you healthier as well. Right, um, right. So, but if you if you had like you know, um. It's like your if if you're limited in your physical movement yeah oh okay yeah. okay yeah um you know some girls have um they have like uh, one of the girls she was like oh my back is really sore so I can't really do that then they will just go oh you do this instead so oh, okay, they'll change yeah. for that yeah. person but it's like you know if you um if you struggle to get from down to the up above you're gonna like you can still do it but you're going to, you might struggle, but um, mm -hmm. it's something that will get you to keep moving and mm -hmm. then it'll get you better. So right, right, um, right. I don't think there's any, there's no like, you know, um, therapy as such, but it's just, if you can yeah. do it, then. Um, then yeah, by all means, yeah, yeah, sign up for the class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. so uh, like uh, you were saying that this is, uh, gives you sort of uh, 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 time, uh, like to collect to collect your thoughts and do things that you're interested in and uh now that uh, uh Gabriel is a little older and needs a lot more attention so uh uh is there anything more that you'd like uh, I know you've told me a lot about him but uh anybody else there is there anything that you'd like everybody else out there to know why Gabriel is so great because I already know he's great because uh -huh. you, you told me all these wonderful qualities about him so whatever well, you know whatever whatever uh, you want to tell uh, everybody about uh, Gabriel um well Gabriel he's just he's my soul dog so um I he it's like we just know each other um I feel like I've met him in past lives before as well mm -hmm. um but it's just he's that dog that just can he can like obviously every dog can feel their owner's um emotions and stuff like that for but it's just a little bit more intense with me because I did go through a lot with wrestling mm -hmm. I have been through a lot um you know in the last couple of years so it's like the average person um might not go through some of the things I've gone through, but they might do. But with having Gabriel by my side, he's like, he's literally kept me going. Um, like he's got me out of bed when I've, you know, had a breakup. He's made me go for all walks with him. And, you know, it's, um, he's just always brought a smile to my face. That's just, um, I cherish so much because he's just, he just knows me so well to know, okay, mommy's really sad. Uh, I need to cheer her up. What can I do? I'll run around the house like a lunatic. And then I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> he's running around and he looks at me and he's just like, she going to laugh? She going, okay, no. And then he no, goes no, around no. again, running around. And I'm like, what are you doing? And then I burst out laughing. Yeah, I remember, you know. I remember uh, uh, that, that one, uh, that one video uh, that you sent me. And it's like, yeah, sure. I'd love to. And it's like, uh, He's gone like in another room, and then you yeah. keep calling him. Here, Gabriel. Here, Gabriel. And he's trying to get his traction on the floor there, and you can hear his <laughs> you can hear his feet spinning. And it's yeah. like, man, this this, uh, this guy's really excited. So he, so he he gets its traction, then he runs to you, puts on the brakes, puts on the yeah. brakes, then he runs mm -hmm. back in there, and it's like, it's like, what are you doing? And it's like, yeah. well, he's just having fun, right? He's just just having fun. That's what dogs do. So. Uh, yeah. Like and like they like they say you can uh, uh you can leave the house to go somewhere whether you go to work or where you are and you come back or like if you make a quick quick uh, trip to the store and you're gone five minutes so it's like to them five minutes or five hours or five days it's the same amount of time right if you're gone five minutes it's like you've been gone for five months right when you come when you come in the door something like that yeah yeah no it really is because. Um, he could always like it's funny because I have so many videos of him and it's going to be things that I cherish when he does go but um, he just knows me so well like it's like he's just connected to my soul that mm -hmm. he just knows that 
okay, I need to cheer her up. Okay, I need to give her cuddles. Or I want, like, if he wants cuddles, he, it's like, I just know. Like, I, he just, it's this look that he gives me. And I'm just like, right. come on then. And, right. you know, he'll go, you know. And it's just, <laughs> you, he's yeah, you so make that, lovable. You make that instant connection with no words. Yeah. Just, yeah, no. just no the words, eyes, like, just, back and forth or, yeah. He, we just know what we're talking about. And, um, like, even now when he's, because he's got doggy dementia now. and Oh, like, I, oh yeah, okay. I, yeah. I, I never realized that they could go through that. Okay. I, yeah, yeah. He's he go he's going through a little bit, and I can just see, because obviously I'm quite connected to him. That, oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Like, when he comes in at night, he walks up to the room, and he looks at me, and I'm like, so what do you need, baby? What do you need? And uh -huh. then you go back outside, and he'll just stand there, and I'll go, do you need to come back in? And they'll come back in and he goes, because he's like, I don't know what I'm doing out here. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, yeah. he's going through a bit now. And that's yeah. why it's like uh, important for me to be there for him right, because right. he was there for me. Right. And he's just so lovable that he's mm -hmm. just, he's taught me to love who I am, to love myself and to have fun in my life. Mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. that's what he expresses. He expresses happiness. He expresses um, just genuine care for other yes. people. And just love he's just pure love and yeah, they are um, yeah and like I just yeah. learned so much from him yeah. in the 14 years and it's like you know yeah. it does hurt my soul to know that he will one day leave me right um, right right and it's like yeah. it just pains me because I want him to be around forever but oh, sure it's sure. not possible it's, you know right, it's right. Um, he right. he's he's coming up to the end of what he needs to teach me mm -hmm. and it's you know, they always they're only here for the um for a certain a short, amount of time. And, short amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, right. And it's just really good. Like um the other day I was just like, he's got a rash on his stomach, his legs are like, you know, his muscles are going a little bit. And mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. I just broke down and said, I don't know what else to do. I, I don't know what else to do. And my housemate was just like, You've done everything yes. you can yeah. just know yeah. that you should be proud of how yes. well you yeah. looked after him. He's right. so loved. Yeah, you, you you should be yeah you should feel uh like content uh, satisfied that that you've done absolutely everything in your power yeah. to to help him and uh w would there ever be a point like you said he's uh, uh has a doggy dementia uh would there ever be a point where it comes where he doesn't know who you are anymore I mean the dementia or um. Because I know that that happens with people that they yeah. they change and they become, you know, it's like the same body, but it's yeah. like the mind different. becomes different. It's a different person. So I was just wondering if uh, if you, you know, knew of any ailment like that connected with you know the uh, uh, dimension for uh, dementia for animals so um not that i know of um i don't believe that he will probably forget me if oh, anything yeah. he'll be, like i think if anything he'll forget my like my housemate perhaps or you know because he's only been like him and his kids have only been around for like six seven months oh so, okay whereas okay, but... i've been there the whole time so right right i don't believe that he'll forget me um, but it could possibly happen, but the vets yeah. have said that, um, they haven't seen a dog forget the owner. Oh, um, okay. That's good. That's so, good then. Yeah. Very good. Like yeah. if he ever forgot me, I'd be like, oh, damn you. But you know, um, <laughs> let, like, me, let, you. Me, let me give you <laughs> the head you like, oh, you oh, me. <laughs> yeah, all, all the love and the care that <laughs> I've given you all these years, um, right? <laughs> it's like I loved you and you know, <laughs> right, um, right, right. but I like if he did forget me, it's like you know I just have to just keep loving him, um, just oh, showing yeah. him love and just yeah. showing him that he he's um he's safe and mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. show him everything that he showed me. He showed me love. He showed me happiness. Mm -hmm. He showed me that I'm safe in my home with him. And you know he's 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 done like these little things where I've lived by myself. And if he heard something outside, he's not a protective dog. Um, but if he heard something outside, he'll start growling and barking. And I'm like, where did that come from? So right. it's just it's just now for me to show him that that, you know, I've you've taught me how to look after myself. You taught me how to love myself and be happy. And this is what I'm gonna give, this is what I'm gonna show you that, you know, you're loved, you're safe, and um you've got every like if you and I keep and I do say to him, even though it breaks my heart, but I do say to him, if you ever do need to leave me. 
then you just let me know when I'll be here and we'll go through this together. And, you know, I don't want him to go, but right, right, I can't, right. you know, it's going to be one of those moments where it will be um, mm-hmm. that time. And I just want him to know that um, he's he's here and he's safe and he's in an environment that he's loved. And right, that's right. all I can and, give him. This is the best right. life that he I can give him in the next however long I've got him. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and, and you can... Him. Yeah, and you can both be satisfied that uh, you've given each other uh, as much as you can to each other, yeah. love and support, and yeah. that uh, uh, you've you've used everything in in uh, in the well that you have, uh, like a water well. You've used all everything in the yeah. well in your reservoir that you have to uh, show love and support yeah. and, and uh, care. And for I don't you. like. I don't know what more, more I can give him because he's changing so much. It could be one day he can have a good day. The next day he can have a bad day. Mm-hmm. It's always a different thing every day. And um, it's just I have to just keep showing him, like just showing him love and support and just mm-hmm. doing what I can to make him comfortable. And that's the main thing I have to do now yeah. just to make, make him comfortable and make sure he's not in pain, make sure he's not that's feeling right. like – you know too stiff and you know so um these are the these are things i have to always um make sure i do just to make because he's done it for me he's made made sure that i'm happy i make he's made sure that i'm comfortable and safe and mm-hmm. so it's it's just my turn just to um to show him like this is you know right. um, you, you're, right. okay. You, you're okay you're you okay you know? both you both have an equal amount of caring for each other and that's that's a nice that's a nice relationship to have that you're both on the same level and have the same amount of <laughs> love. I think, um, I think it's like to a point where if anyone asks me to go out with them, like, you know, a friend just goes, Oh, Hey, are you free on the, um, free tomorrow? Do you want to go out? I'll be like, no, nah, uh, um, I'm busy. And me just being busy is just me just sitting home with Gabriel. Just watching right, the movie. right, right, right. Like, well, I'd you know, just- you know, you know, you could say, uh, no, um, uh, you know, if they're not familiar, that you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 Gabriel. Gabriel, you can just say, no, well, I can't go out tomorrow. You know, I'm really spending some time with Gabe. So kind of kind of let them think who Gabe is, you know, and think think that uh, they're in competition with, you know, like a like a <laughs> six foot four, like a rock type fella, you know, so. <laughs> So kind kind of well, play it up as best you can that way. No, I'm spending time with Gabe. I don't have any time. Yeah, spend you know? time with Gabe. But most of the time, if somebody um, if somebody wants me in their life, they have to know about Gabriel because oh, we naturally, come, naturally, we come we come together. We don't. There's mm-hmm. no like you get me or him. It's me. That's and right. That's right. You know, That's it's right. it's always been like um, it's always been like that. If you don't like Gabriel, then meh, sorry, That's there's right. a door. Well, you know. Yeah. If uh, if they don't take uh, both of you, you know that uh, not it's meant not to meant be. to be. You know, right. if, you know if they want one without the other, but not together. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like well, move on. There, yeah. there, there's somebody else. Uh, there's somebody else better. You know, yeah. so just keep moving. I, on. I like if anyone ever even makes me choose between them and Gabriel, I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're going. They're yeah. going to. Lo- they're going to lose every time. They're going to lose. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't, like, uh, yeah, don't, uh, don't even try. Don't even. Uh, try. Like, I think people know that by now. That if, um, if they even mention one word against Gabriel, I'm just like, what? Uh, yeah, Wanna right. Want to try that again? <laughs> like, no, like <laughs> they, like they say, talk to the hand, right? Yeah, yeah. Talk, They're talk. like, oh, I'm sorry. Just, <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. So, so to, uh, uh, speaking about talking, I've uh, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on my show uh, uh, today, uh, Natalie, uh, talking about uh, every you know everything that you do, the wrestling, the writing, the acting, the modeling, uh, uh, the, the dancing, especially uh, Gabriel. I thank you very much for uh, telling all of us. I, I already knew a lot about Gabriel, but thanks for letting everybody else out there know about Gabriel and uh, it's it's been an absolute pleasure uh, for you uh, having uh, uh, for me to uh, have you on my show and uh, I thank you very much for graciously accepting uh, my invitation to be here.
I thank you for having me. It's been so fun. I loved it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I've had I've had fun uh, too learning uh, all the different things that you do, and I know everybody else there. Uh, they uh, they had uh, just just as uh, good of a time as uh, as I have listening and talking with you today. So. Um, yeah, once again, thank you for being on my show. Take Thanks for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to spend time with me and everybody out there. And um, I wish you nothing but uh, more success in, in uh, everything that you do, oh, you. whatever you do in your career, writing, acting, dancing, modeling, whatever. So uh, oh, thank you. And you too. I'm so I'm so proud of how how much you've grown and what you've been doing in your life so i'm very thank proud of you thank so, you thank you very I much i wish you all the best too thank you thank you <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> thank you so so everyone um uh, my name is edward s redcar uh, the host of edward s redcar's entertainer chat and today we have all had the awesome pleasure of speaking and uh being with uh, natalie for the time that uh, uh we've been with her uh, today so uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, uh, like this uh, 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 interview in the, uh, YouTube in the the box down there. You, you you all see where it is, the like button, and and uh, make sure you leave a comment. Uh, tell how much you enjoyed uh, our time that we spent with Natalie today. And uh, until we all uh, meet again, uh, have a good day, a good week, a, a good uh, month, a good life, mm -hmm. and. Um, we will uh, see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>